Hi, Todd. So, really nice to speak to you. Um, so, I guess you've been involved with the Fallout story right from way back in the beginning with the game. Maybe you can tell us a bit about what get, you know gave rise to the idea in the in the first place. What brought rise to the games or to well the original series in '97 uh, done by Tim Kaine and some people at Interplay. I just love those games. I love the original games and was fortunate enough to get to work on the franchise starting over 20 years ago, so it's been 20 years now, actually, um, working on it. I just love this, I love this world. I love this universe of not just the, the apocalypse, what you would do in it, but the world that existed before, this kind of retro future. Everybody's kind of very naively um, excited about the nuclear future, and then it goes wrong. And I guess with Jonathan Nolan, his CV precedes him in terms of, you know, work on The Dark Knight and Westworld. Um, so you knew you were in a safe pair of hands, but seeing just what he's done with this, must have been really extraordinary. It's really great. I was a fan of his work that you mentioned, and I reached out to him, you know, five years ago to say, hey, would you be interested in talking, thinking about doing Fallout TV, and you are my dream choice. But I never met him, and we really hit it off. And the way we connected in terms of let's do something new and unique in this world and push it forward. And uh, he's just been an awesome person to work with. It's been, I mean, honestly, one of the most enjoyable experiences of my career. And seeing what they've done with it is just, you know, as a fan myself, it's awesome. Because often you find sci-fi can be a bit earnest and a little bit serious, and here you've sort of yeah, got this I mean, great so of mashup of it being quite silly and absurd, while also, you know, really epic, a bit of B-movie -mov -movie madness into the big budget storytelling. So what do you think is so key about that tone that people can really dive into? Yeah, thank you for saying that. That is what really makes Fallout unique, is it goes between those tones of, it can be a serious, dramatic, it can be an epic action movie, and then it can be a dark comedy. Uh, and bringing in the music as well, it's kind of nostalgic, romantic music that also, when you listen to it, you realize bad things are happening in this love song. Um, and Fallout combines all of those things in a way that I think very few things in entertainment do. And we spoke a lot initially with the show of finding that tone, and I think they really nailed it. And I think it's also about making things feel real and feel tangible. You know, often in contemporary film and, and series TV making, you know, people may rely heavily on CGI, whereas, you know, getting a bit of a hybrid approach, I think, really makes a difference. Yeah, and I was surprised. I, when I got to set, I thought there'd be more movie magic. And no, they just built it. They built a two-story vault. Um, they had the overseer room I could sit in and go through the papers. And and so much of it was done practically. I was really, really surprised. Did you have a favorite moment or a favorite scene um, that you can't wait for audiences to see? I love the scene where uh, Lucy comes out of the vault. You know, the door opens and she enters into the wasteland. That's always a big moment in our games. And how they shot that, they shot that in Namibia. Like it's mostly a practical shot where it raises up and you see the ocean. That's that's real. And so every time I watch that scene, I just, I love it. And of course, what an incredible cast, particularly hinging on Ella as, as Lucy, but also Aaron and Kyle and Walton. What was it like seeing these actors bring these characters to life? You know, the one thing, and I've, I've worked with actors in you know, the video game sense, mostly voiceover, seeing um, their talent and just how hard they work too. They feel like the days are long and you know they you know if someone calls action and you have to be you have to be on in that moment. And you know what they brought to it is really, really uh, spectacular. And I met them as normal people before they were on set and do, and doing their their roles and seeing that transition, just, you know, huge amount of respect for what they do. And of course, you know, like the best sort of sci-fi, you can just go along for the ride, you can find all the, you know, funny bits funny and, and enjoy the sort of dark moments, or you can also be taking it on another level and there is a bit of a reflection there, maybe on the have and the have nots, you know, the contrast between these really privileged people in the vaults and those in the wasteland and kind of think, you know, where our future might lead us. So what do you think do people take away? Well, I think it's for everybody to make those decisions. You don't know who the good guys are and the bad guys are, or the decisions somebody made to survive for themselves or their family. And then, you know, get you that moment where you judge people and then realize maybe I was judging them wrong. And then the decisions you have to make. So the games, we try to do that where, you know, those decisions are hard on you as a player. And then in the show, you can see that in the various characters, what they have to go through. Are you hoping there's going to be many more seasons? I think I was reading something about hoping you go to as many as like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and you go really deep into this world, but who knows? Well, right now we're just, you know, we're excited for this season. Hopefully 
uh, everybody loves it enough that we get another shot to do more. Fantastic. Really enjoy the night. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. Cheers.